for one, greatness is being sown into you through the word. Y'all get great teaching here. That's a great seed. That's a that's great material to start with. Then y'all get taught and trained through greatness. You get you have great examples before you. You have all the great, and then most importantly, you have the spirit of the great one available to you to live inside of you. So to this message today. Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for protection, seen and unseen. Father God, we thank you for your invisible hand moving in our lives, Father God. Controlling, hallelujah, every variable, Father God. Controlling every nuance, hallelujah. Oh, we are just so grateful, Father God, that you are in the great things and the small things as well concerning us. Yes. Father God, we ask you right now if there's anything unlike you in our lives, expose your ability and remove it, Father God, so that we can hear clearly what you are saying to Father God, Lord, and if there's anything unlike you in our lives, give yes. us the strength, hallelujah, yes. the confidence, hallelujah, and the faith in you that you will help us to overcome it, Father God. Break every chain, break every bondage, remove every giant, Father God, and bring down every wall and stronghold, Lord. Whew, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, Father God. Now open our eyes so we behold the wondrous things within your law. Open our ears so that we can hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Open yes. our hearts so that the seed of the word that is sown today finds good ground, takes root, grows and blossoms, and produces fruit of righteousness in our lives for your glory. And let me decrease and you increase. Hide me behind the cross, speak in lips of clay. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, God. Now, Help us to be lights in darkness, beacons of hope in a land that so desperately needs them, directional arrows pointing people to you, that lives be changed, souls be saved, and orphans are orphans no more, but they come to know you as Father and know themselves as children of the Lord. Let the world be filled with your glory through the reflected image of the Father in all of his children. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, today's word is going to come a little differently than typically delivered, and God is still good, <laughs> because I'm going to start out without giving you a focal text like we normally do. But fret not, there's plenty of scripture to go around. Plenty of scripture to go around. But instead of giving you this focal text, I want to draw a principle of life for us to incorporate into our practices from three biblical examples. Now, I know for some of you that will be difficult. So if you are taking notes, the objective for us today is to grab hold of the principle that obedience is for tomorrow. Obedience is for tomorrow. Actions of obedience are seeds, just as actions of disobedience are seeds. We oftentimes preach and teach and talk about disobedient and the ramifications that come along with disobeying and rebelling against God. But today I want to give you the opposite or inverse of that talk and conversation and let you know that just as disobedient can be seeds, obedience are seeds. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 reads, be not deceived. God is not mocked whatsoever. See, it says, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So often we take that scripture and we look at the negative things that people are sowing, but in that scripture there is no designation to the type of seed that is being sown. Right. It simply says, God is not mocked. Here's the, here's the kick, kicker. A lot of times when we're instructed to do the right thing, the proper thing, obeying God, the enemy leads us to believe that what God says is going to 
crop up because of our obedience isn't going to happen. Sometimes we don't think God will come through on his part of our obedience. Mm -hmm. But I want to put that myth to rest today because I want you guys to get a harvest from your obedience. Yes, I want yes. you to get a harvest from your obedience, your seed of obedience. Amen? Amen. 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 So I want you to understand that just as much as we focus on the implications of sinful choices we have on our future, we must highlight the good that obedience does as well. Amen. Obedience does good. Yes, does. Obedience is good for your body. Yes. Obedience Amen. is good for the body. Amen. Galatians Amen. 6 verse 9 says, and let us not be weary in well-doing. A lot of times we get weary in well-doing, but let us not get weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap. Oh, there it is. We shall reap if we faint not. Again, I say, obedience is for tomorrow. We will reap someday yes. if we remain obedient. So, let us look at our first example. So our first example comes from the story of Noah. The story of Noah, a familiar story, right? Mm -hmm. The story of Noah is found in the fifth chapter of Genesis, and it is in that chapter that God gives Noah the instructions to build the ark. That's found in Genesis chapter 5, verse 14. Now listen. It's interesting because as Noah began to build the ark, God gave Noah additional instructions along the way. Oh, that's a good place to just point out a point that you don't need all the details to start walking in obedience. Ooh. You don't need all the, uh oh, well, <laughs> that, that don't work for some of us analytical, logical, strategical types. Hey. I, I hear you, Sister Ruby. I know sometimes we need all the information because without that, we, we, we struggle sometimes. But Noah started to be obedient without having the full, imagine building something and not having the totally complete blueprint mm. but that didn't hinder Noah and I want you to understand that just as it didn't hinder Noah you should not let it hinder you either on mm. top of that the Bible historically lets us know it took Noah 100 years to build the ark. Yeah. Now, I know some of y'all calm down because I know like he lived to be 100. Noah didn't start working on the ark until he was 500 years old, according to the Bible. Listen, they say, I didn't write the thing. I just teach it. I didn't write the thing. I just teach it. But it took him 100 years, watch this, watch this, to build the ark. Noah exercised obedience for 100 years. <laughs> Uh-oh, now, 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 now I'm messing up somebody. He exercised obedience for 100 years at, on, on something God told him was going to happen that never happened before. Wow. He, he, he had to be obedient and trust that God was going to do something that he had never done before, but that didn't stop Noah from being obedient. He was obedient for 100 years. Some of us can't be obedient for 100 seconds. Oh, boy. Oh. Ow. Did I hurt somebody? Yes. Did I throw yes, a rock man. up in this yes, place? Yes. Some of us can't be obedient for 100 seconds. That's why God didn't call many of us to build the ark. Mm. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Listen, a life of obedience is a marathon, not a sprint. Mm. The life of obedience is, I mean, I'm a wound up already. I am, man. I got a long way to go. I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can run this fast for a marathon, but it's okay. We're going to make it do what it do. The life of obedience is a marathon, not a sprint. Listen, you got to replace that instant gratification mentality with a long-term security and stability mentality. Did y'all catch that? Because so often we're looking for the instant gratification. We're living in the moment, and then after the moment is passed, we're we're empty, we're dry, we're angry, we're upset, we're left wanting. But if we remove that instant gratification which often causes us to disobey and we shift from that instant gratification mentality and walk in long-term security and stability, then we'll, we'll see the value of obedience over time. Wow. Wow. Noah was obedient for 100 years and because he was obedient for 100 years he was prepared and equipped for what came next yes he was prepared and equipped because his obedient put his obedience put him in the place that God would have him be when the storms came and the flood 
rules upon the earth. Watch this. Many of us are not released for what comes next because we're fumbling the present moment. Ooh. We're fumbling the present moment. You may struggle in the moment, but don't fumble the ball, y'all. <laughs> don't fumble the ball. Okay. It may be difficult in the moment, but don't fumble the ball. You, have, you may even have to allow yourself to be tackled. You ever watch a football game and the guy is fighting for the extra yards yes. when he, he probably should just go down at this point and he fumbles the ball? Mm -hmm. Listen, listen, listen. You may have to allow yourself to be tackled, but whatever you do, don't fumble your obedience because when you fumble mm -hmm. your obedience, you lose possession of what you have been designed and assigned to carry. Okay. When you fumble the ball, okay. you lose possession of the prize. Oh my okay. goodness. Okay. Don't fumble. We, sometimes we can't get to the goal line. What you can be, you can, you, it can be first down on the one inch line, but if you fumble the ball and lose possession, all is for naught. Mm. Hmm. Noah didn't fumble the ball for 100 years. Mm -hmm. Had Noah fumbled the ball, he would have been swimming and drowning with the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Did y'all catch that? If Noah had not been obedient for 100 years, but he fumbled in the last year, he would have been swimming mm -hmm. and drowning with the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Likewise, many of us are drowning in life because we keep choosing to disobey God and swim in sin. Whoa. Ooh, wow. Fumble in the ball. Yikes. <sighs> Fumble in the ball. Be obedient with what you have been given to do mm -hmm. because obedience today will give you access to your ark of safety tomorrow. Mm. You got to be obedient today so that there is an ark for you to enter into when the storms in your life are raging. You have to be obedient today so there is a, there is a prepared place for you when chaos occurs. Your deliverance is in your obedience. Let me show you. Yes. Example number two. Example number two. Our second example comes from the book of Exodus, the 12th chapter. In this chapter, God gives Moses and Aaron instructions to share with the congregation of Israel. Verses 3 through 11 in the 12th chapter of Exodus contains a list of things to do over the span of four days. Four days, it was what Israel people did in those four days, rather. It was what Israel did in those four days that God will respond to on the fifth day by allowing the death angel to pass over them. I want you to understand that they had to obey God for four days so when the death angel came on the fifth day, they would be passed over, right? Had the people of... Uh, I'm going to try not to get stuck here. I think I'm going to get stuck here. Um, had the people of Israel not followed God's instructions... They would have suffered the same consequences of those who were not his people. Mm, right. If right, the people right. of Israel had disobeyed, not found the lamb or goat without spot or blemish, not prepared it, not painted the post with the blood, mm -hmm. then they would have suffered the same fate as the Egyptians who did not know or did not worship or follow God the Father, right? Mm -hmm. Obedience, I want y'all to hear this. Help me, Holy Spirit, right here. Obedience saves us from the results of a life absence of the covering, favor, grace, and mercy of God. Obedience saves us from the complex of an absentee spiritual father. Y'all, y'all, I, I think y'all might have missed that. Listen, you may not have had a choice or a say in if you had an absentee father in your real life. Your father may have abandoned your family. Your father may have been tragically taken away from sickness or disease or accident. He may have been murdered. He may have been incarcerated. None of those things you may have had power over. But you don't have an excuse for not having a present spiritual father in your life. You may have had an absentee 
physical father, but you don't have to have an absentee spiritual father. And if you and, and, and the same way you feel the impact of not having that physical father, you may not have had that encouragement, you may not have had that validation, you may not have had that chastisement, you may not have had that discipline, you may not have had that correction, you still have a spiritual father who can give you all that and more, but the choice is yours. Egypt didn't have a spiritual father to cover them, but Israel did. Yes. And because they obeyed him, they were covered when the death angel came. I want you to understand that their obedience prepared them for what was coming Hallelujah. next. Amen. Oh my God. Whew. Whew. Why would you choose to have, if, if, if you had your choice, would you choose to have an absentee natural father? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. So why would you choose? Because you do have a choice to have a spiritual father active yes. and present mm -hmm. in your life. <sighs> Not only did Israel avoid the fate of the Egyptians, but their liberation was also achieved because they obeyed. Mm. And God wasn't finished there showing Israel what he can do with obedient people. God can do so much with obedient people. Yes. And, but you just got to understand that obedience today is for tomorrow. Your obedience today is for tomorrow. God also has an inheritance for obedient people. That brings us to our third example. Our third example. Our third example is found in the sixth chapter of Joshua. The sixth chapter of Joshua. Many of you are familiar with the story of Jericho and how they were instructed to march around the city in silence for six days. On each day, the instruction said, the priests carried the trumpets of the ram horn, sounding the horns in front of the ark, but the soldiers remained silent. Mm -hmm. It was not until the seventh day, after they circled the city seven times, when the priests would sound a long blast on the trumpets, and the whole army would no longer remain silent, but would release a loud shout, right? Mm -hmm. <sighs> Six days of obedience. Six days. Days of yeah, obedience. Yeah. Some of us can't be obedient for six seconds. I did it. I, 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 yeah, six yeah. days right, right. of obedience and faith in expectation of God's word. But on the seventh day, there was a release. Watch this. Watch this. I don't care. You can't tell me no different. This is what I believe. This is my conviction. It was not the shout that brought down the walls of Jericho. Right. It was their obedience. Oh, yes, no. Yes, oh, yes. no. Oh, no. It was their obedience that brought down the walls of Jericho. Listen, a lot of times we yelling at our obstacles when we should be obedient. Listen, Ooh. listen. Faith without works is D-E-A-D. -E Faith without works is D -E -A -D. dead. Your mouth is saying Jesus, but your actions are saying Jezebel. Ooh. Ay, 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 Lord Jesus. Ooh. Oh, my God. You talking a good talk, but your walk is bold Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Stop Ooh. it. Stop Ooh. it. Ooh. Oh, Stop it. No. Ooh. How 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 is God supposed to use a mouth that is full of blessings but a lifestyle that's full of curses? What's he supposed to do with that? How is he supposed to get glory out of a mouth that knows the rules but a lifestyle that shows rebellion? Make it make sense. Make it make sense to me because the math ain't mathing. The math ain't math. Obedience to God requires a trust in God that f will fulfill what he says he will fulfill. Did y'all hear that? I trust, I, I behave and act the way I act because I trust <coughs> that God will fulfill what he says he will fulfill. Yes. I believe that he will do what he says he's going to do. And because I believe that he will do what he says he's going to do, I do what I do. I trust him. I behave in a way that proves I trust him. That proves I don't doubt him. 
Obedience is a response. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. It is a response to God. Watch this. Disobedience is a response. Right. Oh, no, y'all didn't like that right. part. No. It's a response to God. Mm -hmm. Either you're going to respond in obedience or you respond in disobedience. Mm. Y'all trying to walk the tightrope, though. <laughs> No, 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 no. But it's a response. But now ask yourself, how do I want to respond to God? Mm. Don't answer that. Because I know how y'all want to respond to God, but there's a part two to that question. I ain't going to mess with y'all. Mm. Let me keep moving. So I gave you the three examples of um, what God did when his people obeyed him, right? What he did for Noah, what he did for Israel. And what he did, who's that last one? Oh, what he did for Israel. Oh, for, for, for Israel, Israel through Jer at Jericho. Right? So now I want to shift a little bit and talk to y'all about your, the enemies to your obedience. The enemies to your obedience. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to pull the sheets off of Satan. We're going we, we to expose him so you know what's going on when your obedience is being challenged. When you have that desire to waver. Mm. The first enemy to obedience. Fear. Our first enemy to obedience is fear. Mm -hmm. Let me ask y'all the question. Because y'all don't think so. But I'm going I'm to I'm kick it just like this. How many of you would have chosen the fiery furnace? <sighs> y'all quiet. How many of you would have chosen the lion's den? <laughs> Right? How many of you would have chosen martyrdom or disobedience? Would you have in the moment said, we're going to go ahead and bow down when they play this loud music because I ain't trying to go into the fiery furnace. I'm going to go ahead and not pray for this period of time because I'm not trying to be thrown into the lion's den. Right. I'm going to go ahead and not preach the gospel because they out here killing Christians. Mm. I, I, oh, is this too real? No, no, how, no. How, how, how many of us would have chosen, would have, would have succumbed to fear yeah. when they faced that alternative? Mm -hmm. look, 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 my boy Peter. Y'all know I love me some Peter. Peter's my boy. Even Peter folded to fear when he was choose, accused of being a follower of Christ. Right. He sure did. He folded. He was like, I don't know the man. <laughs> I don't know him. They was like, they, they arrested. They got, they, listen, they got, they got Jesus in handcuffs. They got their knee on his neck. Jesus was like, I can't breathe. No, it wasn't that deep. But I'm just, I want y'all to, I'm Bless trying to God. give y'all the visual. I'm trying, and, and, and then he go, and there go his boy. Peter like, nah, -uh, not me. There's like, y'all how you speaking? He's like, blankety blank, blank. Blank, bad word, bad word, filth, filth, farm. <laughs> he did everything in his power because he didn't want to get locked up too. Mm -hmm. I don't know, cousin. That's, 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 that's not my, that's not folks. That's not my folks. Mm -hmm. Listen, listen, listen. The denial of Christ by Peter was Peter telling a lie. Mm. When Peter told that lie, he broke the commandment: "Thou shalt not bear false witness." He allowed his fear to cause him to disobey the law. Mm. Wow. But how do you combat that? You combat it with the word of God. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Y'all got to understand this. This is heavy. And this ain't even just about obedience and disobedience. This is about life. God don't need fear. The only fear that we deal with when it comes to God is reverence for him. You know, not, 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 I mean, maybe a fear of letting him down. Like maybe, maybe a fear of like just, 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 just wasting everything that he has placed inside of you. So if you're dealing with fear as it pertains to God's instruction in your life, mm -hmm. let me tell you something, that ain't nothing but the devil. Because God ain't going to make you afraid to follow him. Think about that. 
God isn't going to push you away when he is trying to draw you close. So if there is a fear associated with whatever it is that God is calling you to do or you believe he, where he's leading you, that's the enemy. And you got to you got to you got to fight that thing with the word of God. I shared it so many times when I preach and when I've taught over my lifetime. I said I used to be afraid of the dark. I used to be, yeah, I used to be afraid of the dark. And I'll run in my mom's room sometime and jump in the bed. My stepdad wouldn't have it. He's like, get out of here. <laughs> my stepdad was not about that business, y'all. And my mom would be like, she showed me the scripture. She said, you say the scripture to yourself over and over again. And I believe, I was like, God, you haven't given me the spirit of fear. God, you haven't given me the spirit of fear. God, you give me a spirit of a sound mind. God, you give me a spirit of strength. And in those moments, guess what? It empowers me to remember what God has given me instead of what the enemy is trying to give me. And when I take value in what God has given me, a, 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 the spirit of power and of love and a sound mind, then I can move forward. I do not, listen, do not allow Fear to fool with your faith. Mm. Do not allow fear to fool mm -hmm. with your faith. Stay obedient. Yes. Peter let that fear fool with his faith and disobey. But since we're talking about Peter, I'm going to go ahead and move right past, right to the enemy of your obedience. The second one. The second enemy to our obedience is past disappointment. Past disappointment. Except Peter, right? So prior to Peter being a disciple of John the Baptist, I'm sorry, prior to Peter being called by Jesus, he was a disciple of John the Baptist. Yeah, he was a disciple, him and Andrew, his brother. They were disciples of John the Baptist. Watch how this plays out. I want y'all to watch how this plays out. John the Baptist, when Jesus came on the scene, John the Baptist was arrested, right? Mm -hmm. After John the, ba John the Baptist was Theoretically, at that time, Andrew and Peter's pastor. Okay. Okay? He was their shepherd. He was their leader. Their leader, who they follow, who they trust, who they're being trained by, gets arrested and beheaded. Okay. He killed my pastor mm -hmm. for preaching the gospel, for telling us about God, for training us. Now I have a new pastor, Jesus. Mm -hmm. I have a new leader, Jesus. Now, my new leader is in the same situation my old leader was in. I just watched my old leader get killed talking about this guy. Now, my new leader had all this power, and my new leader was doing all these miracles, and my new leader was raising people from the dead. But now my new leader is in the same situation that my old leader, my old leader is in. And human nature says the old memory of trauma pops up again. Right. Oh, yeah. Think about it. Right. Think about it. Put yourself in Peter's situation. Because Peter saw the miracles. Peter then walked on water and everything. And this man did these miraculous things, but now he's locked up. And the last man that Peter had that type of father-son relationship with got killed. Past disappointments will cause you and influence you to trust your feelings and your emotions mm -hmm. and forget about your faith. Mm -hmm. A traumatic past can challenge your faith and influence your obedience. Yeah. I want you to be careful about filtering and processing your present decisions through your past trauma. Mm -hmm. All right. Y'all okay? Mm -hmm. Y'all yeah, I... ain't come here for all this. <laughs> <sighs> number three, enemy to your enemy to your obedience. Number three, unbelief, unbelief. In the book of Numbers, between chapters thirteen and fourteen, there is a story of Moses sending spies into the land of Canaan. When the spies returned, most of them gave an unfavorable report. But Joshua and Caleb, I feel like I should be preaching because I, somebody say, but Joshua and Caleb. But Joshua and Caleb. <laughs> but Joshua, oh, and there's always, it's always that one. In this case, there was two. But Joshua and Caleb believed that they could take the land. Oh, yes. my goodness. There were some believers in the crowd of naysayers, right? Yes. Uh, uh, listen, you may be the only believer in the crowd of naysayers. I want you to believe anyway. Mm -hmm. If everyone else doesn't believe, you be on the side of those who 
believed. Joshua and Caleb believed that they could take the land, but because of the unbelief of the crowd, because of the unbelief of the masses, the people began to rebel and revolt against the leaders. Mm. They didn't rebel and revolt against Joshua and Caleb. They revolted against Aaron and Moses. In Numbers 14, verse 11, the Lord says to Moses, How long will these people treat me disrespectfully? Mm. Listen, and reject me, and how long will they not believe in me despite all the miraculous signs which I have performed? Maybe it's just me, but when I look at this text, I, I, it appears to me that God considers unbelief disrespectful. Yes. <sighs> mm. Oh, yeah. I have done all of these miracles to bring you out of Egypt, and you still don't believe me. Mm. Okay, listen. Don't strike me down. Let's put God over here for a second. And let's, let, let, let's walk this through humanity. Right, right, okay. If you do good and you treat people with kindness and love and patience and tolerance, and then you tell them one thing about their life and they don't believe you, do you feel disrespected? Yeah. Yes. Do you feel disrespected? Where do you think you get that from? You get it because you were created in the image of God. <laughs> you respond, oh Jesus, you respond to certain things the same way God does. Because that is how you were made. Israel's inability to believe God and believed that he was able to cause them to triumph over the obstacles that were in front of them. Even They couldn't believe, even though he had showed them his might, their unbelief kept them from taking the land. I, it blows my mind. How, how, how could you not believe God? Like, how could you not believe God? When he has constantly come through. Look, look, how it, uh, but, okay. Maybe he's just like too far up here. Maybe, maybe our, our mentality is just, we just can't grasp it. But how is it that you can put, or we can put our hopes and dreams into so many things besides God? Ooh. Okay, we'll go, right. we'll, we'll go that way go with there. it. Go how ahead. is it, look, 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 how is it that we can put our hopes and dreams in our careers and not mm. God? Right. How is it that we can put our hopes and dreams into people and not God? How is it that we can put our hopes and dreams into in, in, into 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 lottery tickets or, or gambling or every or or, or or you know get rich quick scene multi tier marketing? Mm. We can put our hopes and dreams in everything else. And I'm listen, listen. It's okay to have ambition. It's okay to have goals. But how is it that we can put your hopes and the dreams of yeah. making it into the NBA, yeah. being a rapper, being a singer? Yeah. Being, you know, and, and not put anything into God. The issue here is we have all these side bets when we need to go all in with God. We gamble on everything mm. else and we don't give God a chance. Matter of fact, here it is. We gamble our whole life away with all the options that the world gives us. And then when we're old and we only got a couple of coins less, we want to put them all on the table for God then. Whoa. Wow. Wasted. That's what the pro that's, that's what prodigal nice. means. Like the story of the prodigal son, mm -hmm. the word prodigals means wasteful. Wow. Mm -hmm. He was wasteful. And when he was down and out living and rolling around with the pigs, mm -hmm. then he said, let me go back to my father. It's mm -hmm. another message for another day. All right. We believe in everything else. And we have unbelief that interferes with our obedience with God. Unbelief is an enemy to your obedience. Mm -hmm. Was that four? Yeah. That was three? That was three. Uh -huh. I did, yeah. 
Okay, here's number four. Oh yeah, I got four. Okay. Number four. Y'all probably think this one should be five, but this is number four. Ego, pride, and vanity. Mm. <sighs> Enemy to your obedience. Yeah. Second Kings chapter five. Another story. I'm just I'm 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 just Thompsonizing these. Y'all go back and read them. Here we find a story of Naaman, right? Naaman is a commander in the king of Syria's army. So he got some power, he got some authority, he got some prestige, right? Um, Naaman had an issue that all of his power and all of his authority and all of his prestige couldn't solve for him. He had leprosy. But he heard that the prophets was praying over people and this leprosy thing was being healed, right? So Naaman seeks out the prophets. And um, he seeks out the prophet Elisha. And um, that he could be healed. And we pick up the story um, in the ninth verse of 2 Kings chapter 5. So chapter 9 reads, so, I'm sorry, verse 9 reads, So Naaman came with his horses and his chariots and stopped at the entrance of Elisha's house. Like, he, he pulled up in the main bow, you know what I mean? Like, he, like, like, like that meant something to the prophet, you know what I mean? Right, right. He pulled up stunning. Like, I got I to gotta make it so y'all get it. I got to make it. You know, sitting on 22, you know, yeah. clean. <laughs> clean, leprosy and all, but clean, right, right? He pulled up like that, right? Yeah, anyway, let me, keep, let me keep it. Let's stay in the book. Let me stay in the book. Elisha sent a messenger to him, and, and Elisha didn't even come out. That's, ooh. <laughs> he pulled up like that. Elisha didn't even come out. He sent his, he sent his sidekick. He said, go talk to this guy. I'm praying. <laughs> Elisha like, I'm praying right now. I got time for the foolishness. Um, Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh will be restored to you, and you will be clean. I done pulled up in my best car with all, and, and he had people with him. Right. He had he had his um entourage. Oh, y'all help him preach. He had his entourage with him, and and, and he ain't even and, and, and the man of God ain't even give him the time of day. Mm. Sit the butler. <laughs> sent the butler. Y'all all right. We have yeah, you know what I mean? He sent the butler. Like, like, I'm Naaman mad. Naaman, like, don't you know who I am? I don't went out of my way to come here and you don't even have the common decency. His pride and his ego was on display. It says in verse 11, Naaman was furious and went away and said, Indeed, I thought he would at least come out to see me and stand and call on the name of the Lord and wave his hand over the place. And all of the lepers would be healed. Like, like, like Naaman had an ideal in his mind how grand it should have been because of who he was. Right. Mm. Wow. Oh my God. It don't take all of that for God to move. Mm. And, God, and, and God seldomly moves the way we think mm -hmm. he should or supposed to or mm. has to. Mm. I'm, kind of, I'm kind of in the school of God thought that God will do it in an obscure way just to prove that he is God and and, and, right. and his right. ways are not your ways. I think I read that somewhere, somewhere before that his ways are not our ways and his mind is as far as above our minds as the, the earth is of the heavens are above the earth. That's a that's a big gap. Naaman <sighs> was in his ego and his pride, he said he was furious. And then he started to rationalize with himself. He said, it should have happened this way. Or, or maybe there's other rivers that I could have got into that are better waters than the waters of Israel. Um, could I not wash in them and be clean? He said, so, 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 so Naaman turned and he left in a rage. His ego and his vanity and his pride was about to cost him his miracle when all he needed to do was be obedient. Right? Yeah. How do I know? I'm going to tell you how I know. Because if you continue to read the story, it's a good thing Naaman had a good friend. It's a, it's, it's a good thing one of the people in his entourage had some sense. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing that one of the people in his entourage wasn't a yes man. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, Naaman, unless you don't know what he's talking about. We, we, we'll go find somebody else to wave their hand and, and we'll go get in the other water seven times. It, you know, it's a good thing. <laughs> Naaman had a friend. Because his friend told him, he said, if he would have told you to do anything else, if it accomplishes the goal, why aren't you willing to do it? It came from a source that Naaman had already been in agreement with. Oh, that's, that's decent right there. That's decent. So after 
Naaman humbled himself. And then he, he got out of his ego. He got out of his vanity. He got out of his pride. And he humbled himself. He obeyed the instructions of God and was healed. I love this part right here, y'all. I love the, the, that, that, that part is, 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 is a deal breaker for many of us. Because guess what? Naaman was stuck. Mm -hmm. His pride and his ego had him stuck. But that didn't change what obeying the word of God would do. He just had to get unstuck. So, 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 so what does that mean? The word of God is still true. The word of God will still work. Mm -hmm. The word of God will still do what it's supposed to do, what it's intended to do, what it's designed to do. Because the word of God is a seed and it will produce when you do what you're supposed to do. When mm -hmm. Naaman finally got out of his own way and obeyed, he got the results. Some of us need to get out of our own way and finally obey and get the result. It's never too late to obey. Who the, oh no, y all, y all, somebody should have jumped up. It's never too late to obey. You may have been disobedient for a week. You may have been disobedient for a month. You may have been disobedient all your life. But if you're still breathing, listen to what I'm saying. The thief on the cross was a thief all his life. But he took that moment yeah. to obey and trust God. And Jesus told him, this day, Thank you, you will be with me in paradise. It's never too Lord. late to obey. Deal with your pride. Deal with your fear. Deal with your past disappointments. And obey God because your tomorrow is counting on your obedience today. Yes. Yeah. Us. <sighs> yes, Lord. We talked about fear. We talked about past um, expectations, past trauma. We talked about unbelief. We talked about pride. The fifth one. The fifth one. <clears throat> this is the one. Ungodly character. Ungodly character will cause you to disobey. Mm -hmm. Look at here. Acts chapter 5, verse 1 through 4. Y'all know the story. Now a man named Ananias with his wife Sapphira sold a piece of property. And with his wife's full knowledge, he kept back some of the proceeds, bringing only a portion of it, and set it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said... Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and secretly keep back for yourself some of the proceeds from the sale of the land? As long as it remained unsold, did it not remain your own to do with as you please? And after it was sold, was the money not under your control? Why is it that you conceive this act of hypocrisy and deceit in your heart? You have not simply lied to people, but to God. <laughs> Peter tells him, you didn't have to do all that. Right. It was your land. It was your money. Mm -hmm. You could have gave what you wanted to give. But you chose to keep some, but act like you gave it all. He said, you didn't have to do that. You have some ungodly character. <laughs> and your ungodly character, it, it, it says it right there. Why has Satan, oh, well, we already know if Satan had filled your heart, then God ain't living there. Yeah. Mm. Wait, what did I, is, is that what I said? Why has Satan filled your heart? Like, like, like if, 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 if Holy Spirit and God comes and lives with your heart upon salvation, then some, somebody else can't be there. Oh, boy. So, what'd you say, oh, boy? <laughs> Ungodly character will cause you to disobey God, bro. Uh, you gotta, you, 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 you gotta, and you have, and this is why you gotta examine yourself honestly. Amen. And you have to look at your character. And what does ungodly character look like? Anything that don't look like God? Right. Mm. Like, think about it. Do you lie? Mm. Do you steal? Mm. Right, right. <laughs> Do you cheat? Right. Do you backbite? Mm. <laughs> like, 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 uh, ungodly character. Like, like we ain't got, we ain't got to get all deep. But ungodly yeah. character. If, if, would God do it? Mm. Some godly character if He would right. do it. All right. Keep talking. We got to get to the point where we understand our obedience in the moment. It has a ripple effect in our life. Mm -hmm. Their choice, Ananias and Sapphira. Their choice to be disobedient. They die mm. on the spot. Mm. On the spot. There was no tomorrow for them in obedience because their disobedience cost them everything. Mm. Listen, obedience helps to equip you while disobedience strips you. Mm. <laughs> yes, 
Obedience helps to equip you while disobedience strips you. Obedience mm. will teach you patience. Mm. Obedience will teach yeah. you yeah. how strong you really are. Mm. Obedience will allow you to the opportunity to see that fear is false evidence appearing real. There have been so many times where I made something a mountain and it wasn't even a molehill. Mm. It was nothing, but my imagination was trying to keep me from seeing what God had mm. beyond that fear. And when I walked into in obedience, I was empowered and equipped to trust God all the more. Yeah. He wants to equip us to trust him all the more mm. and stop allowing our fear and our unbelief and past trauma and ungodly beliefs to disarm us. Don't allow the enemies to your obedience to cause you to miss what God has for you on the other side of trusting and believing Him. There is something great waiting for us on the other side of trusting and believing. There was, there, 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 listen, the entire journey of Moses illustrates that his obedience, Moses' obedience was all he needed to fulfill the assignment God gave him. Listen, Moses obeyed God. God sent plagues to Egypt. Moses obeyed God. The Red Sea was parted. Moses obeyed God. God provided manna from heaven for them to eat. Moses obeyed God. God led Israel with pillars of fire and smoke. Moses literally had a tree branch, a stuttering problem, and obedience. Wow. That's all Moses wow. had to offer. Wow. But look. At the work God did with that obedience. <laughs> Look at what God did with that obedience. He didn't take away, oh my God, he yes. didn't take away Moses' stuttering problem. Oh. He, 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 Moses still couldn't get, get it out. <laughs> Jesus. But, 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 but nevertheless, <laughs> come on, nevertheless. Yes, yes. Come on, Moses. Yes. God did what he said to me. Hallelujah. I don't need you to be perfect. I need you to be obedient. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. Moses did that. God did that with Moses. Imagine what God can do with you and your obedience. Thank you, Lord. It's not your bank account, not your voice, not your education. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But with your obedience. Yeah. Imagine you, what God can produce. With your obedience. Obedience produces fruit of obedience. Thank you, Lord. <sighs> the, fruit of uh, the fruit of obedience mm -hmm. is the promises of God manifested in your life. Listen, 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 listen. Noah and his family survived the flood just because mm. Noah obeyed. Did I say that right? Noah and his family survived the flood just because he obeyed. The angel of death passed over Israel because the people of Israel obeyed. Israel triumphed at Jericho because they obeyed. The woman with the handful of grain had cake for a whole famine just because she obeyed. Peter caught more fish than he could fit in the boat and handle just because he obeyed. Death, watch this, death, mm -mm. Death could not hinder Lazarus mm. from coming forth when Jesus called him. Even his dead body obeyed the voice of God. Yes. And he came out alive. I want you to understand. Obedience yes. has power greater than death. And last but definitely not least, yes. because Jesus obeyed God. He got up three days later with yes. all power in his hands because he was faithful and obedient yes. to the death on the cross. His obedience wasn't for that moment of crucifixion. His oh, obedience yeah. was manifested in the fruit of promise three days later. Yes. Woo. Come on now. Yes. Yes. There are some promises that God has made for all of us, but you will not see the fruit of it mm -hmm. absent of an obedient lifestyle. Job 36, chapter, Job 36, verse 11 says, If they obey and serve him, 
They shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. Whew. Aren't you tired mm. of spending your days in frustration? Yes. <laughs> Aren't you tired of spending your days in worry? Yes. Are you tired of spending your days in lack? Today I want you to purpose in your heart no. to start spending your days in prosperity and your years in pleasures by deciding to pursue obedience and believe that your obedience today will bring you to the place of promise with the Father in the future. Yes. I pray that you guys were blessed. Let's put our hands together. Hallelujah.